Okay, good evening, everybody. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Council Member Von Rudenberg. Absent, Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Here. Deputy Mayor Sims. Here. Council Member Battaglia. Here. Mayor LaBrosse. Here. Before we go forward, I just want to announce that uh, Deputy Mayor Canestrino will not be on video. She just had a procedure. And uh, because of that medical procedure, she's uh, chosen to just be on audio, not video. Thank you. Okay, this meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, NJSA 10 colon 4-6 at SEC notice having been published according to law with a copy on file in the city clerk's office and a copy posted on the bulletin board in city hall. Pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act and recent regulations issued by the state of New Jersey, the following procedures will be in effect for public comment during this remote public meeting of the city council. The public shall have an opportunity for comment during the designated public portion of this meeting. The time period for public comment is limited to three minutes for each speaker and no person may address the council more than once except for speaking during an advertised public hearing for an ordinance. At the time designated for public comment, the mayor or other presiding officer of the council will recognize one speaker at a time. That speaker must identify himself or herself by full name and whether or not he or she resides in Hackensack. No other member of the public is permitted to speak unless recognized by the presiding officer and other remote attendees may be muted during that time if necessary to eliminate background noise. Meeting okay. attendees shall exhibit appropriate demeanor during this meeting as required by section 37-15 of the city code. In the event any member of the public becomes disruptive at any time, that individual may be muted by the presiding officer and will receive a warning that continued disruption may result in being prevented from speaking or removed from the meeting entirely. The Zoom meeting platform has a texting function. However, this is to be used only for the purpose of advising the city's IT staff of any technical concerns or issues. The public may also submit written public comments to audibly be read into the record by the city clerk during the public portion of any remote public meeting of the city council. Comments can be submitted by regular mail or by email to asab at hackensack.org. Comments received less than five hours before the start of a meeting may be carried to the next meeting. Any person who actually speaks during the public Comment portion of a remote public meeting may not also have a comment read into the record. The city clerk will stop reading a written comment into the public record once it reaches a three minute limit. Duplicate written comments may be summarized and noted for the record in a consistent manner. Okay, thank you. Would everybody please rise for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United of States, States of America and, and to the republic. republic. For which it stands, uh, one, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Okay. And with that, we will go to, uh, first I'd like to, before we move forward, you know, we're still hurting over the loss of our dear friend, Ted Ehrenberg, our city manager, and uh, I would like to have a moment of silence for him if I could. Thank you very much. And a lot of us wish they had uh, Zoom up in heaven so we could uh, hear from our friend, but it's not to be. So with that, I turn it over to uh, interim city manager and our fire chief, Tom Freeman. Thank you. Uh, thank you and good evening, everyone. And for those of you that don't know me, um, I am the fire chief, Thomas Freeman and currently uh, serving as the interim city manager also. So welcome. Sir. Um, first on the agenda tonight is a presentation from uh, DMR Architects, Fran Reiner, in reference to Lot T. Okay. You're on, Fran. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of, of the council. Uh, I'm going to share a presentation. Okay, so this evening I'm here to present uh, what is the first reading for uh, Municipal Lot T, which is also uh, identified as 189 State Street. Uh, this is a redevelopment plan uh, that is being presented to you, as I said, as a first reading. Uh, the property, which is located uh, along Trinity Place between Union and State Street, 
um, and is and the property surrounds the existing uh, Islamic Center. Uh, the property is essentially 100% uh, impervious. It is uh, completely comprised of municipal parking, which is uh, 223 spaces. Uh, it's identified as an underutilized property in that it was uh, part of the uh, scattered sites investigation study that the city did a number of years ago. So the property was previously designated as an area in need of redevelopment. Uh, there's no tax revenue on the current property. As I mentioned, uh, the area uh, that is, so it is surrounding the existing uh, Islamic center. Uh, there's limited to no streetscape along any of the three streets. It backs onto the train tracks uh, and there's no public open space so those are the existing conditions of the property. Just a closer look, again, you can see the Islamic Center, you can see the existing surface parking, all municipal uh, parking for the 223 spaces. As a part of a redevelopment uh, plan, what you wanna do is, is determine whether or not the plan is consistent with the state plan and with the previous city's master plans. And so in this particular case, the redevelopment plan that we're presenting here uh, is consistent with the state plan it's consistent with the 2001 master plan, uh, the 2012 downtown rehabilitation plan, as well as the two 2020 master plan reexamination uh, study. This particular development redevelopment plan provides uh, affordable housing on the site, which would meet the city's current obligation. Uh, it requires stormwater improvements uh, as a part of the development. Uh, it would increase the number of public parking spaces uh, and it would generate tax revenue. And so on the left represents two concepts uh, uh, from different angles. The first one looking from State Street across Trinity Place. You can see the development of the building on the top. And then the back, uh, this, the lower image represents uh, an image shot in the air from Union. You can see in the area that I'm uh, showing in my cursor is the Islamic Center here. Uh, you can see that the uh, area between the Islamic Center and Union Street is left open uh, and is left to surface parking. Uh, and then the development wraps around behind it and then uh, towards State Street. The proposed redevelopment plan is for 268 residential units. There would be 60 affordable uh, or ACOA units that would be required to be built as a part of the project. Of the 268 units, there would be 320 parking spaces that would be required for the private development. And then if you look at the bottom, you'll see that there's 238 spaces dedicated to public parking. So currently the site has 223 sites, uh, 223 parking spaces post-development, it will have 238 public parking spaces plus 320 spaces for the private development. There is a requirement of 7,000 square foot of retail uh, to face state, uh, state Street. Uh, the, the development uh, allows for 12 stories up to 144 uh, feet. As again, some of the things that occur from this development redevelopment plan would be the construction of affordable housing units. It would have increased tax revenue, obviously from the development today, there is no tax revenue. It provides a public roof of, for open space. So if you look on the bottom, uh, behind the Masonic Temple, this portion of the parking structure is public, dedicated public. There'll be an elevator access to a rooftop public open space that'll be for, uh, for the community and not for the development. There are architectural design standards that are uh, required as a part of the development, as well as streetscape improvements along Union, Trinity, and State. Uh, as a part of the development, the post uh, development stormwater runoff will be better than the current condition. There's a requirement for uh, underground and or above ground stormwater management uh, methods that are put into the development. As I mentioned, there's uh, proposed 238 public parking spaces as part of the project. That would be the entire first level of the parking within the building and the second level, as well as the 53 surface parking spaces that will be left as a part of the development. So in total, there's 185 covered and 53 surface. Uh, just to show you some of the uh, conceptual development plans on the top, you see uh, the ground level. You can see the, the white area located in the middle. That's where the Islamic Center is. There is no uh, structured parking around the area. This is all surface to remain. 
and then the first two levels within the project would be for public parking retail located on the right would front on state street and this portion of the project would be for uh, the residential lobby and then as you go up these would be uh, the kind of typical residential level broken down into units and with with that uh, i'd be happy to answer any questions just from a a, um, a process standpoint this is the first reading this will then be presented to the planning board uh, at the May uh, planning board. And then second reading will be back in front of the mayor and council in May. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Fran, I got a question. You, are we, they're gonna build this building around that, that mass, then that building is not gonna leave? So we uh, had a conversation and a call with uh, rep several representatives from the Islamic Center. Again, you can see it in the bottom uh, picture here. Uh, we presented this particular plan, went through the, uh, the, the, uh, the floor plans with them, as well as this building elevation shown here. Uh, they were supportive of the plan. Uh, they just wanted to make sure that there'd be available parking for them during construction. But the intent here is for this particular uh, Islamic uh, center to remain uh, in its current location. I don't know. And how many parking spaces do, do the center have? So I uh, believe, the, well, the center has zero parking spaces. It is the, 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 the Islamic Center's property is essentially at the building footprint. They utilize uh, the municipal parking spaces uh, that, are, that are on lot T uh, currently. And I believe they have a, a 30 spaces that they lease. We've left uh, 40, I believe it's um, 45 located over here and another 13 on, on the other side. So a total of 53 surface parking spaces. So they would have more than they currently have uh, left in the surface areas next to the building. Question, between the parking for the unit, you talk about 200 CTA units, right? Yes. Okay, 200 CTA units. How many units are going to be available for the people to park? The people that were using the parking before. So the the existing parking lot has two hundred and twenty three parking spaces. Okay. Public parking spaces. Okay. After development, there will be two hundred and thirty eight public parking spaces. So an increase of fifteen more public parking spaces will be available to the public, dedicated to the city of Hackensack. Okay. Uh, so people that, can. People can rent that and park there, right? Yes. Okay, now, so so what is the total of the parking space that they're gonna be in this area? To total, between between the, the parking space for the people that are gonna live in this building and the 200 CDA units that are gonna be dedicated for the residents of the city of Hackers that they're gonna do business in Main Street. So you- Total, you, yeah. yeah. Total of 538, park, 558 parking spaces. So 558 total parking spaces, 320 okay. dedicated to, to the private development and 238 dedicated to the city. Okay. That they could rent or lease. 238 can be rented monthly. Uh, the city can just decide to do hourly. You know, they do meters, they can do monthly, however they choose to do that. Is this going to be a garage or just flat space? So it is, um, it is, surface space uh, located outside of the Masonic Temple, two levels of public parking located within the garage, and then another, uh, I believe it's three levels of parking for the private. So, so anybody who lives in the unit would have to go up to the third level in order to park. Okay, but I'll do Any other questions? By Any other questions from the council? No. Fran, real quick, you, you while you were talking, you said uh, there's a rooftop uh, yes. plan that's open to everybody who is in the building, correct? So there's um, there's two open roof rooftops. So you can see the one right here located within the building footprint. I think hopefully my cursor is showing that. I don't know if you can see that. I can see it. Uh, so that is 
for private residents. Right. And the one over behind the Masonic Temple, the one here that I'm circling, that is a butts up against the railroad, there'll be a separate elevator in there to have direct access to anybody from the public to use that open, that top open level. It's not dedicated to the residential. So the, the portion behind the Islamic Center along the railroad tracks on the top level of that deck will be open to the public. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say that, but a homeless guy can get an elevator and go to that rooftop? Yes. Okay. How many floors is that, Fran, that rooftop addition of building? Uh, it's, it's, I believe it's four total uh, parking levels here with an elevator, interior elevator up to the top level of the, of the parking area, of the uh, open space. But when you got that, the building right next to it, what can you possibly see? Well, I, I don't think it's a visual. I think it's more of just providing public amenity as a, I don't think that there's a, you know, there's vistas other than looking, you know, at the skyline of Prospect and Summit. Uh, I think it's more just providing open space and um, and green space on the development for the public. Is there going to be a, a, a grill up there? Or none of that's pool? been decided yet. Yeah, none of that's been really discussed, but it, it'll the city will have the ability to do what they want. Um, the developer will, will be constructing it. So the city's going to be responsible for the rooftop. It is open to the public, but I, but I would imagine that when you get into the uh, an agreement with the developer that the city and the developer will decide what's in the best interest of the city. And so if it's if it's better for the developer to to um, to uh, maintain it, then I'm sure that that can be done as a part of the redevelopers agreement. So it's not costing the, the city anything. Thank you. Okay. Everybody set. All right. Thank you, Fran. Thank you. Thanks, Up next on the agenda is a another presentation. This is from Suburban Engineering, excuse me, Suburban Consulting Engineers, uh, in reference to uh, some park improvements. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'm going to share my screen now. We also have a uh, presentation prepared. All right, let me get this into a slideshow. So I want to talk today about Stibe and Columbus Parks. We are nearing completion and ready to get these projects out to bid shortly. So I wanted to give you a quick overview on where we stand. So we'll start with Stibe Park. Um, for Stibe Park, the project goals here were to make sure we can maintain those established trees within this area while improving the park to replace the building with a new concession and restroom facility, a centralized pavilion shelter and some additional seating. We also wanted to utilize the existing equipment, the playground equipment that exists is in decent shape. So we wanted to maintain that um, that exists today. Further with the trees and building within them and working with nature, we always have to consider maintenance. So that was another big factor in our design and our project goal. So I have a rendering here that shows our proposed improvements. Um, so you can see here, we have a design that works with the existing trees. So all of the landscaping you see here, those are existing trees. The walkway that circulates um, through the site and also along Coles Avenue is a more natural shape than your more linear sidewalk you typically see. And that's to work within the existing vegetation. Up front here, we have a proposed um, restroom and concession building, a new precast building. On the next slide, I'll show you some representation of what that would look like. We also have this centralized pavilion that will have some picnic tables beneath it. And it has a stamped concrete accent around it. As I highlighted before, the existing playground equipment remains where it is today. Um, it's in good shape, but we're gonna improve the surfaces. So you could see in different colors shown here in these tan colors, that is a rubberized play surfacing with earth tones. It will transition to an artificial turf um, and then back again to the playground surfacing. So this, our goal here was to achieve um, a vis visual separation but have one smooth contiguous surface, which promotes uninterrupted access between wow. the areas. Um, also, we have this plaza space. Um, we wanted to provide some additional seating. So we have some game tables and additional seating over here. That's on top of some stamped concrete as well. Lastly, there are proposed security improvements um, via security lighting and cameras that will also um, be uh, installed here. 
So this is the visual representation of those main improvements, um, which is the restroom and concession building and the pavilion. So I've provided a photograph which shows you a little more realistic picture of what you could expect. But I also have a rendering that we did that shows you the colors that we're proposing. Um, so this again, both up top, we have that centralized pavilion structure. And then below is for the restroom concession building. Um, the last thing I want to talk about here is our anticipated schedule. Our goal is to bid this by the end of the month. We did take about another month or so to award and construction duration we're estimating at 20 weeks. So we're looking at completion in the fall. Next is Columbus Park. So at Columbus Park, our, our goal was to replace the existing uh, courts that were in deteriorated condition. Um, there are four courts that we looked at here. The first one was the existing tennis volleyball multi-purpose court, the futsal court, and then there's two basketball courts. We want to limit tree removals as well, as always, as part of any improvement project, and then um, also address some maintenance concerns. So we wanted to look at why these were deteriorating and address anything and address anything that we could um, so the future design can reach its full uh, useful life. So with that, you could see on this plan here, we are proposing four replacement courts. These courts will be post-tension concrete with a color seal coat system. Um, the next slide, I'll show you what those uh, look like. Um, we'll start up by the basketball courts. We're replacing the existing basketball courts with two new courts. These, are, these meet the high school standards for sizing um, and we're performing some drainage improvements up in this area adjacent walkway improvements as well. When we go down to the futsal court, the futsal court remains in the existing location, um, short of shifting it a little bit from this adjacent property, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and then we also have a proposed uh, volleyball court. So this court will only be for volleyball. These two courts, like I said, are shifted away from the adjacent property. It was evident that the city's property and fencing was being damaged by the parking that occurs on um, this private property. So we shifted them further away to um, promote the longevity of those items. Unfortunately, some of the issues we were experiencing in these courts were due to three large trees that exist along this property line. Those trees we reviewed in the field to see if we could uh, modify the design to accommodate them. It's our opinion that the three trees um, cannot be saved as part of these improvements. So there are three trees that have to be removed. Overall, the project increases the green space within Columbus Park, um, which I'm happy to report. Um, lastly, the anticipated schedule. So for Columbus Park, we are looking to go out to bid the middle of May. Again, award about a month later is what we typically see. And construction duration is also about 20 weeks. Um, so again, about fall time for this to be complete and open back up. So everyone can see what these courts would look like. I just have some perspective views. By no means does it mean that there's gonna be lighting um, at the basketball court, but I wanted you to see what the post-tension concrete courts with this color system look like. And that's what you see here. All of the um, site uh, furnishings and appurtenances, so your basketball nets, um, all of your nets uh, would be replaced as part of this project as well. So with that, I know that was a short presentation, but if there's any questions, I'm available now. Council? At, at Columbus Park, when you said you want to move that over, are you going to move it over? There's a walking track in Columbus Park. Are you moving it on top of that walking track? Yeah, so we would have to relocate the walking track and reconstruct some of that, um, but we will maintain that walking track around it. You know, it's a baseball field there, a softball field, and you don't want to move this, these, this to interfere with on the baseball field. Yeah, for reference, these three trees that are shown here, I hope you all can see my cursor. These three trees that are shown here are existing trees that will remain. So it's a very minimal shift. We just wanted to provide... Um, some room so the fencing of the cities wasn't continuously being damaged. We are also proposing guide rail um, along this area to further protect the city's facilities. No, what I'm saying is you're not going to move this volleyball court and this foosball court on the baseball playing field. That's what I'm saying. In the right field out there, because people hit the ball the right field and that, that doesn't interfere with the, with the with the 
the game, if a ball goes in the middle or someone runs into that fence out there. Understood. It is a minimal shift just to accommodate to be able to get a guide rail in there. Um, the best perspective is probably these trees here. And you could see we're just shifting out a little bit in, I would say, deep right field. So I believe that that would not be a concern here. Okay. But understood what you're saying. Um, Sty Park, how are you going to, that neighborhood up there is really quiet. How are you going to keep kids from underneath that pavilion? Because I know tons of kids hang out at Polify Park underneath the pavilion, and those neighbors up in that area complain that they hear basketball, you know, after nine o'clock. So we are installing some security improvements. So the city will have some tools if they need to manage that. Um, but that's really all I have to answer that, Deputy Mayor. Also, the camera is going to be connected all the way to the police station so they can monitor from the police station anybody that is there after, let's see, now you club. So the yes. basketball court is going to be on the other side of the casino. I mean, they just had a fight in in Carver Park last week, and no one did nothing until I called the police. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying that, you know, they're gonna monitor and they know what these these cameras are. Um, when they when they was doing the tennis court, no one even know how to get the the footage on on what was happening in the in the tennis court. Well, that's the reason they have to improve all the measures that we got yet to protect the people and to protect the parks. So we're gonna hire. A park ranger to go around the parks. And the no, parks have to close at a certain time. You know, like I said, we, we've gotten calls already on that park with, with kids playing basketball on that court and everything. Well, the same kind of problem we used to have in Polyfly when the kids, they used to go and be there like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, and the police officer in the way they can see from the street what was going on and they needed a civil because it was in the dark. So as long as we can improve the system by putting the camera, the lighting, and to have the park ranger, I think the situation will improve. We have to I mean, see what happens. What time does the park ranger going to work up until? Well, they start to the city, they start to the city and they believe how they're going to do the arrangement for them. It's it's pretty and all, it looks real nice, but I know that's gonna that's gonna attract a lot of people to sit underneath that pavilion. Well, it's up to the police to do some kind of control to prevent that. After a certain hour, like overpack, after a certain hour, you're not allowed to be in the park. That's it, simple. I know whether you're gonna be sitting at the park to one o'clock in the morning. So after a certain hour, you gotta go home. That's it. Next. Any other questions? Thank, Thank you, you. Let's go. Thank Aaron, you. what kind of Aaron, what kind of backboards are you putting in that car? We're working with the rec department right now. Um, they had requested adjustable, so we're working on selecting that as we speak. Um, I want to be a part of that, Aaron. I don't, I don't know what about no adjustable um, rims or anything. We don't have that in any of the other parks. But if you have a, a rim and you you can lower the rim, these these kids are going to be dunking and hanging on that rim. That could be a problem. Okay. Yeah, that's where we're at right now in the process with Columbus Park. Um, it's really that final site selection. Thank you, Aaron. You're welcome. Next, you. uh, next on the agenda is it's a discussion and reference to the ordinance for resident parking on Hamilton and Anderson. Um, after hearing some very valid concerns from the residents, the ordinance has been revised and it'll be introed at the next the council meeting. Uh, just quickly highlight uh, the revision, um, which basically was to accommodate uh, guests. Uh, residents of an area designated in subsection E may contact the Hackensack Police Department through its non-emergency number to request advance permission for a guest of the resident to park a vehicle in a residence only on-street parking area for the sole purpose of visiting the resident in his or her home. The police department shall ordinarily grant such a request unless it is determined that traffic and parking conditions at the time of the request render it impractical to do so. So this is uh, just a, 
it's not going to be any fee associated with having a guest there. It's just so that the police have um, are aware of it. Have um, we reached to any of the people in that neighborhood with the, the revisions? I know the one gentleman who brought it up probably should be aware of this so he can speak to his neighbors. Yeah, I, I believe he was um, emailed some responses back to, you know, he, he brought up some good concerns and I believe the revisions were given back to him. Okay. And, and if I may, um, uh, Mayor, just want to point out that as of right now, we do not need the ordinance change that if, if someone in the, does live in a resident parking zone, they can call right now the police department non-emergency number to let them know there's a guest and to and, and assuming there's no uh, particular reason you know due to some unique traffic condition that it cannot be accommodated uh, the police department will work to accommodate that we're just formally putting that into the ordinance to make sure it's codified and, and clear to people who might look up the rules that that is an option available to them. But but to be clear, we don't need the ordinance for it. My understanding is that the police department will extend that courtesy if someone reaches out. So if anyone's watching and says, hey, you know, my, my folks are coming over, uh, you know, we're all vaccinated now and we're gonna have uh, dinner in my home, um, but there's no parking, they can call, give the license plate number and, uh, assuming the situation doesn't preclude the, them doing so, the, the police department would make a note of it and, and uh, allow that to take place. So just wanna make sure everybody knows that now. And that's for all parking zones within the city that are resident parking, not just the new proposed Anderson and Hamilton locations. Okay, good deal. Good. Okay, next is a uh, discussion on the introduction of the loading zone ordinance for Main Street. There's gonna be 16 loading zones identified uh, in this ordinance. Uh, and just to give a brief uh, overview, uh, what the language is gonna read, no person shall park a vehicle in a loading zone during the times indicated other than for active loading or unloading of goods, materials, and or persons. Stopping or standing within loading spaces by vehicles that are not actively loading or unloading goods, materials, and or services shall be deemed a violation of this section. Loading zones on Main Street are separately regulated by this chapter. Uh, further on says loading zones between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. any day except Sunday and holidays. There are 16 loading zones identified in the ordinance. I don't think I need to be specific on the locations right now. Any questions? It's all about enforcement, Chief. Yep. Okay, next is a discussion on a resolution. Um, let me just find it. This is a, a, a resolution um, in support of Asian American and Pacific Islander resident support. Um, just to highlight it, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in our community and throughout the state of New Jersey are increasingly concerned about their safety and security, given the rise in hate crimes and racially motivated attacks throughout the United States. Um, the city of Hackensack condemns racism and xenophobia and acts of intolerance against people of all races, national origin and ethnicities, and just uh, reaffirming its support and commitment to safety and security of Asian Americans and Pacific Islander communities. That's, uh, next is a discussion on a resolution um, in reference to um, Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation grant. Uh, the fire department submitted uh, for a grant. Um, just to read out the resolution, City Council and City of Hackensack gratefully accept the grant from Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation valued at $25,106 for the Unimac gear washer extractor, dryer and related accessories along with delivery and installation costs. This is basically um, large commercial washing machines, washing machine and dryer to specifically clean uh, the firefighters gear when they come back from fires. We currently send it out. So this will be a tremendous savings to the city. That's great. Great, great. Yep. Next we have a uh, discussion on the 2021 road surfacing project. So currently, currently for uh, 2021, uh, 
we have six and two. I'm sorry. Six and two. Yes, six eight all together. Yes, we have uh, Beach Street from Summit A up to First Street. That's partially funded by a New Jersey DOT grant. Then we have Catalpa uh, from Main Street to the Dead End, city funded. Fair Street from Lodi to Kansas is city funded. Campbell from South State to New Street, city funded. Lookout Avenue from Prospect to Clarendon, city funded. American Legion Drive from Summit Ave to First Street, city funded. And Clarendon Place from Passaic Street to Ross is city funded. Um, along with uh, in, currently in the design phase, we have Second Street from American Legion Drive to Passaic Street. That'll be partially funded by New Jersey DOT municipal aid. And Lodi Street from South State to Green, which will be partially funded by CDBG grants. So yes. the total bond is, is roughly 2.5 million. And as you uh, heard, a lot of it is, uh, is funded with grants. Um, so there'll be a lot of paving going on and I think people should be very happy about that. Okay, very good. Any questions there? No. Okay. Okay, and lastly, but not least, is a discussion on a resolution uh, naming the city manager's office suite uh, for Ted Ehrenberg. Uh, briefly, where the city council believes it will be an appropriate and fitting tribute to the name, to, excuse me, to name the city manager's office suite at Hackensack City Hall for Ted Ehrenberg as a means to keep his memory alive for decades to come. Uh, the interim city manager is directed to install suitable signage outside the city manager's office suite to memorialize this tribute to Ted Ehrenberg. Approved. Okay, that's all that I have. All right. I need a motion to open to the public, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Von Rudenberg. Absent. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims. Aye. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Mayor Labrosse. Aye. Anybody from the public who would like to speak, please give your name to the clerk and your town of residence, and you will have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is Brid this is Bridget Rucker speaking. Hackensack. Uh, I want to speak about Lot T uh, with the uh, building. I just wanted to know, and I didn't. I don't know clearly uh, from the gentleman that was doing the presentation. Did he speak upon? Um, the the entrance are, are these entrance for COA the affordable housing will they be separate from the actual entrance of market value rate apartments are we making separate interest interests for this 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 oh. building here I'm going to hope and pray we're not because then we'll be following in the footsteps of Teaneck and that's called segregation. <laughs> And we don't want, we are already segregated from downtown. So I don't want it to be where it's segregated, where people cannot go into one entrance in a building. Brand, do you have Mayor, I'm still on the line. If uh, you'd like me to answer that question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please, Brand. So, so the, the uh, units, the affordable housing units will be fully integrated. So you will not be able to tell uh, what unit is, uh, is restricted for affordable housing and is not. So it'll be one entrance for everyone and they'll be they'll be dispersed throughout the building. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that you know we're on one accord and that that's a, co a community when you're building a building. We don't want to have separate entrances all over for uh, those you know for affordable housing and then for market value rate no, uh, no, renters. No, I don't. Yeah. Okay. So thank no. you so much for answering that. I truly appreciate it. You would. Thank you. Next from the public, please. Hearing none, motion to close to the public. Walker. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we will see everybody back at seven o'clock. Uh, you have to adjourn oh, the meeting. Need a motion and to close. And the executive session. And a motion to close. Let's do the executive session first. Walker. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to close the cow session. Walker. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Brad. you, guys.